Great, thank you. So it's great to be with all of you here today at the largest state of the map US to date here in San Francisco. So we're going to talk today about telenav traffic locations and we're going to focus on how that's given us perspectives and learnings on the OSM data and on the map. So I'm Robert Stack, software engineer at Telenav. I've been developing and deploying traffic management systems for a long time. Also here in the audience is Ryan Peterson, product manager for Maps and Traffic. He's been building traffic and navigation for a long time as well. I want to extend a special thanks to Martin Van Excel and to Steve Coast. I also want to extend a special thanks to all of my coworkers who are working on our various OSM initiatives, many of whom, most of whom, actually in our primary OSM focus projects are here in the audience and at the conference today. So thank you. And then finally, I want to extend a very big thank you to the community, to all of you who have built the map and made all of this possible in the first place. So I'll talk a little bit about Telenav, a little bit about traffic, and then some more detail about what we've learned while building traffic locations. So our mission is to help pe make people's lives more stressful, more productive, and more fun when they're on the go. Scout is our consumer-facing brand, which you can see through a variety of channels, including the App Store, including through applications, as uh, navigation applications through uh, iPhone, Android, and Windows Phone, as well as through automotive channels, including a lot of the onboard navigation units for Ford models, General Motors, and others. We also do white label carrier applications for navigation, including AT&T and T-Mobile, Sprint, and others. And then, like I mentioned, we're in the App Store for a variety of platforms. So maps and navigation are core to the navigation experience for our customers, and traffic is a critical component to this. So the question, why TTL, which again is short for Telenav Traffic Locations? The reason we need them at the core is because commercial industry, including ourselves, needs traffic available on OSM to be able to do navigation using the OSM map. And the biggest challenge is where and how to describe the traffic information that we can obtain when placing this on the map. The reason this is a challenge is because the de facto industry standard for providing traffic information are TMC location codes. These are built by the commercial map vendors, Navtech, TomTom, as sort of a uh, joint standard sort of thing that they sell along with their maps. So the problem with that, of course, is they sell them and they have expensive licensing costs, which make them not suitable for the OSM model. So the vision is to have the Telenav traffic locations adopted and maintained as a standard for OSM traffic use beyond just Telenav. So I'll give an update on where we are with, T with Telenav traffic locations. Some of you probably saw the presentation we made last year talking about our in-progress development of traffic locations at State of the Map Portland. So, and there are more details about some of the specifics of how we, how we build the TTLs and how exactly they relate to the map with some samples in there. You can find the previous presentation by looking at last year's State of the Map wiki website from OSM. So if you search through there, you'll see the talk, Telenav Traffic Locations, and there's a PDF link there. So currently, we're projecting to have our maps with traffic for mobile clients projected later this year. They will have real-time traffic updated every two minutes. And the goal with these Telenav traffic locations is to have the identifiers stay somewhat consistent over time, 
And by somewhat, I mean if a new road is completely added or deleted, of course a new traffic location will have to show up as well behind that. However, if a road shifts just a little bit or some shape points get moved or a start or end point gets moved around just a little bit, the idea is we want to then keep the same identifiers for traffic. This will make them more traffic and commercial use friendly because this is similar but not identical to how the TMC model operates today where the identifiers, they change over time as well, but they don't change a lot. And some of the displays that I have up here now are from our OSM prototype client that we are developing and testing internally at Telenav now. So it is our first cut of the display, uh, the display technologies that will have open street maps on them. So I'll give a high level summary of how the Telenav traffic locations are built. They're built directly from the OSM highway with highway tagged ways. That includes the motorways, trunks, primaries, secondaries, and a limited number of highway to highway ramp cases. That does not include any tertiary or lower class roads. So the generation process, which is done through a Java application that we've built at Telenav, it combines continuing ways, which means that a set of ways that continue essentially in the same direction with the same or similar names, then all get combined together end to end. Then we end up taking those combined ways, we re-break them at logical junction points, primarily at intersections with more important roads. Then we break them further, we will break them at less important roads if the remaining traffic locations are still kind of long. And then if there just aren't any uh, more important roads to break at, we will break them further so that we maintain a reasonable length for reporting traffic, including in rural areas. There's a many-to-many -many relationship between the traffic locations and OSM ways. This is because, as those of you who have edited have noticed, there's a high variation in way length. Sometimes they will be five or 10 miles long, like this example way that I put up here, up in the North San Francisco Bay Area. And of course, many others are very short and tend to get shorter as ways are broken to create additional attributes such as identifying bridges and number of lanes and things like that. That's a trend that will continue. So here's just a little sample of TTL by the numbers. Some coverage snapshots for the preliminary TTLs that we've built to date include 1.25 million TTLs, again across the entire United States, 50 states plus District of Columbia, about 1.25 million miles, and they just happen to average out at about a one mile length. This average, though, masks the fairly wide variation in length based on the roadway tag that's involved, such as the freeways, the motorway versus lesser roads, and especially based on an urban-rural split. So urban areas, as defined by Tiger built-up urban areas, have shorter lengths because there's more traffic information to report in the urban areas than in the wide open spaces where we still report traffic information but with lower resolution given the longer lengths that you can see in these tables. So now I will just go through a few slides with our OSM displays on our test client, our test mobile client, with traffic. So here's the San Francisco Bay Area, and then the downtown San Francisco area, for which we have freeways only at the high zoom level. And then we get down to arterial level street traffic for OSM at the lower zoom levels. And again, like I mentioned before, this is for effectively everything that is secondary and higher in the OSM tagging scheme. Here's Washington, Baltimore on the left. 
a little closer into Washington, D.C. I've taken these snapshots on a weekday, so there's some traffic about. And zooming in further to some of the maps, which we get when based on OSM, have all the rich information about the walkways, the sidewalks, and all of the other things that are imported. This is the White House area, the Lincoln Memorial on the left, and then on the right is the U.S. Capitol area. Here are some other cities that are not as well celebrated as the ones I just mentioned, but we also have maps and traffic with nationwide coverage in the USA. So I'll talk a little bit more about traffic and the community. We are working on a traffic feed for limited community use, which is not yet live, but it's coming. This limited feed is available for, or will be available for, um, for limited open use, and then for wide scale or commercial deployment use, then discuss with us at Telenav, and then we can talk more about uh, sharing arrangements, that sort of thing, for higher use. So there will be a feed by tile or by traffic location identifier. And then these identifiers and their mapping to the OSM ways is to be published, and I can currently provide samples upon request. So now I'll touch a little bit more on some of the learnings we've had while building the traffic locations, troubleshooting them, and prototyping them recently. One is pretty obvious to many people who have worked on OSM for a while, that classification consistency varies a lot. It varies by region between different metropolitan areas, even those of similar size and stature, and it varies also by highway type motorway, trunk, and others. So one thing we've noticed is that the motorways are very clearly distinct and well-defined compared to trunk. But once you get to the trunk primary and secondary tagging, those are much more ill-defined, or not ill-defined, but just fuzzy in terms of how they're defined compared to each other. So they're not as easy to classify. So I'll show a couple of examples, and I apologize, this one here is a little hard to read because I've got two wide-scale maps side by side, but just focus on the predominant color of the lines that you see here. This is Albuquerque, New Mexico on the left, Tucson, Arizona on the right, and you'll notice the dominant way color in Albuquerque is red, so it's a lot of primary roads for their larger arterials. In Tucson, Arizona, you'll notice it's pretty much all orange for secondary. I've lived in both places, and it turns out that the arterials in Tucson are a little bit more important and a little bit more overloaded than those in Albuquerque. They're actually a bit more important. That's partly because Albuquerque has a set of freeways that cuts right through the middle of the city, and Tucson does not, so drivers rely more on the local arterials. You can also see classification changes at state borders. So one of them that is more obvious is the Louisiana-Mississippi border. This is probably due to original Tiger import tagging, where different states would have different standards for what they decided would be a secondary road versus a lower residential or unclassified or tertiary road. And you can see here, this is Louisiana down on the bottom, Mississippi on the top. And some of the ways which are secondary in Louisiana will just abruptly change classification to residential at the border. So enough about observing that. The question is, how do we fix that going forward? So one approach is to promote selective highway tag upgrades and downgrades based on the highway functional classification system. There is a fair amount of OSM wiki chatter about highway functional classification and a lot of discussion. So this is something that we want to have some renewed emphasis on just to make sure that there is some consistency in the map in terms of how these classifications are defined. Another approach will be GPS probe-based suggestions at Telenav. 
And for that, I will describe in more detail during the Telenav OSM++ presentation to come here in about 40 minutes. So there are a few more insights that building the Telenav traffic locations have given us and have started, including the Zorro Ways, which became a map roulette challenge that was hosted a few months ago with great success in eliminating most of the Zorro Ways. And what the Zorro Ways are, and again, I apologize, it's a little bit small here, so I'll use my mouse pointer to point out a way that's highlighted here, originally had a little splinter of shape point at one end or the other, perhaps sticking out just a little bit at an odd angle, perhaps out like this before continuing on its way out here. And this was discovered to be a problem because Telenav traffic locations depend upon a smooth transition from one way to the next. Smooth meaning not an abrupt shape point change at perhaps 170 degrees or something like that because that would indicate that's not really somewhere where traffic can continue. Another insight has been duplicate portions of ways. This is not just the duplicate whole ways, but taking junction to junction and just pieces of ways and finding duplicates that fall out of that. Another one has been dangling ramps. These are ramps to nowhere. So this is not a particularly good example here. This one was just dangling out in the middle of the space somewhere. But in any case, the good news is that for some of these things that we've found, they have become less and less common and less and less obvious over time. There just aren't many dangling ramps that go to nowhere in the United States compared to what we saw when first starting these projects. Another one that we haven't implemented but noticed and would like to create a traffic-based report for are highway name changes. So for in this example here, we have a highway that's just called Minnesota 62 and then transitions to Crosstown Expressway, which is hard to read here. And there's another Crosstown Expressway saw, uh, ta naming or labeling that occurs off to the left here. So there's an abrupt transition where that name disappears for a mile or two. So reporting those sorts of things is important because, again, traffic locations are laid out end-to-end -end as ways that have similar characteristics. So that is my presentation today. Here's my email address. And thank you all for your attention. And now time for question and answer. Yes, the question is about TTL standardization and the rate of uptake. So um, are you asking in the context of wider community adoption and use at this point? OK, all right, OK. Um, at this point, we have not released the final set or a working set of TTLs along with the traffic feed. So at this point, there really is no adoption currently occurring beyond some questions and requests for more information and requests for some sample data. For example, uh, I've got a request for the, for the state of California and all of the TTLs and their exact mapping to the ways that are involved for those traffic locations. That answer your question? OK. Thank you, Ryan. I'll, re I'll uh, recap your response for the internet here, which is there's been a lot of government and DOT interest in the TTLs as a good alternative to the
pricey TMC location referencing. Thank you. More questions? Yes. Yes, we are planning to release all of uh, all of their definitions. So, uh, I'm sorry to repeat the question: Are TTLs meant to be or going to be released as open source? And the answer is yes. All the TTLs and their definitions are going to be released as open source to the community. And our longer term vision is to have the community at large, as well as other interested commercial parties and such, help to upgrade and maintain these to create a real industry de facto standard that competes with and is more compelling than the existing more static and expensive TMC standard. All right, any more questions? All right, thank you everyone, and we'll continue with the next talk. <laughs>